हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल आशा करी तुमरा शौकले कुप भालो आचो आज की आरो एक टी इंग्लिशी कोविदा नहीं है आलोचना कर बो बोले हमार ये चैनले फिरे आशा जे कोविदा टी नहीं है अमी आज की कथा बोल बो तो नाम आई रिमेम्बर आई रिमेम्बर लिखे चेन टॉमस होड अमी डेफिनेटली कोविदा टी लाइन डिस्कस कर बो किंतु तार आगे अमी टॉमस हुड शॉम वंदे दुई एक्टिक आता बोले नी एवं कोविता टी एक टा जनरल डिस्कशन करे नी तार पौर अमी कोविता टी लाइन धोरे धोरे आलोचना कर बो आर आज के री आलोचना टी आमादेर बांग्ला एवं इंग्लिशी दुई वर्षन ही होगे ताले शुरू करा जाए टॉमस हुड was an English poet and he was born on 1799 and he died in 1845. This poem, I remember, I remember, focuses on the poet's childhood innocence and the fleeting nature of time. It was first published in 1844. And it expresses the poet's fond memories of his childhood and idealizes it by comparing it with his present, which is weighed down by worries and cares. The poem recalls his childhood days in a reflective and sentimental tone. At first, he remembers how, as a child, he would wake up early and enjoy a sunny day. The sun, personified here as a human being, would appear on time to wake him up. The bond of the child with nature is thus glorified. But, in the present, the poet feels so gloomy and disheartened that he wishes he had died in his childhood only. He is seemingly unhappy with his adulthood, a period full of worries, cares and boredom. Then the poet recalls a variety of flowers of his childhood days. Roses, violets, lilies, the colors of flowers used to send him into raptures. He remembers the tree where the robin had built his nest. He recalls the place where his brother planted a Lebanon tree on his birthday. He recalls how he used to enjoy flying on the swing. He would feel free like a bird and feel quite light and cheerful. Contrasting the feelings of his childhood with his adulthood, he says that in childhood he was free and composed, while in adulthood he is quite unhappy and fevered. No waters of pools can now restore his childhood calm and peace. Thus, finally, the poet recalls dark, tall, far trees. In childhood, he thought the sky was close to the top of the trees. Now, in adulthood, he has acquired knowledge and calls it his childhood ignorance. But at the same time, he feels that he was close to heaven in childhood, whereas he is not in his adulthood. With the loss of innocence, he has also lost the bliss of childhood. So, this was the general uh, discussion on the poem. Now, I am going to play the crucial part that is reading the poem line by line. So, a kovidati muloto chatte stanza ni toiri. Ami protecta stanza kub dhire dhire porchi among tar j meaning shetta explain korba cheshta korchi. First answer. 
I remember, I remember the house where I was born, the little window where the sun came peeping in at the morn. He never came a wink too soon, nor brought too long a day. But now I often wish the night had borne my breath away. This was the first answer. The first answer begins the poem with the anaphoric line, which continues to chime throughout the poem, I remember, I remember. This line centralizes the poem on the pronoun I. By elevating the self, instantly Hood is exposing to the reader an intimate memory. He brings the reader along for his nostalgic journey into childhood. The use of the present tense, remember, also helps to create a divide within the poem. Hood is very much stuck in his present. That is why obviously he is remembering the past and thus he is oscillating between past and present. This is a point of sorrow for Hood because he, feel, he believes or he feels that he is missing the ease of his childhood life. One thing that we should note here is that the sun has been personified as a force for good within the poem. The sun has been presented as a friendly character who seems to do everything to a level of perfection. When the poet says, I am quoting these two lines, never came a wink too soon, nor brought too long a day, he is basically trying to say that even the light within his childhood nostalgia takes on a form of amicable affection. Thus, the complete idealization of childhood is evident right down to the balance of day and night. The idealization is obviously a bit exaggerated as happens in romantic poetry, especially in Wordsworthian poetry. But we have to remember that this shows further how much Hood mourns for his lost childhood. The stock change from idealization of the past against the harsh reality of this being a period not lost is presented within the last two lines of the first stanza. The harsh caesura after but now breaks the melody of the poem, shattering the illusion. Line number 6, 7, 8, these three lines are very important because before the seventh line, the poem had a natural flow. But at the very beginning of the seventh line, when the poet uses this phrase, but now, and puts a comma, a phrase to use korar modde diye, the poet is actually breaking the melody of the poem and he's shattering the illusion. So, as if this particular phrase or the beginning phrase of uh, the seventh line is actually creating a rupture. J flow te, J rhythm e, amra kobitati port chilam, shekhane, there is a rupture that the poet is creating. And this coincides with the end of the first stanza's descriptions of childhood. The caesura represents the difference between memory and reality. Thus, the first stanza ends with an exclamation from Hood. He badly wishes that during that idyllic period of his life, he had died, so it would have never had to end. The harsh reality of the mourning man is stuck against the foregrounded beauty of childhood. Moreover, the link between the poet's death and night is archetypical 
to literature because we have to remember that in literature night represents death and this is a classic example of symbolism in english literature so this was uh, the overall meaning of the first stanza ebare ami second stanza ta pori i remember i remember the roses red and white the violets and the lily cups those flowers made of light the lilacs where the robin built and where my brother set the laburnum on his birthday the tree is living yet second stanza shuru hocche ekhi phrase diye i remember i remember and in fact all the four stanzas uh, will begin with this single phrase that is i remember i remember so this second stanza of the poem also focuses further on the harmonic era of hood's childhood hood focuses on two main images the colors and the flowers of the period he focuses on red and white to describe that the array of different flowers gives the readers a sense of beauty of the nature in his childhood memory yet we have to remember this thing very important yet the flowers within the poem are also presented as delicate and this delicacy has a deeper interpretation the presentation of being made of light i mean i'm i'm quoting this uh, phrase from the second stanza that is made of light of course elevates the flowers to a beautiful spectacle aro ekbar boli ei je phool gulo ke bola hocche made of light এর মধ্যে দিয়ে দ্য পোয়েট ইজ এলিভেটিং দ্য ফ্লাওয়ার্স টু আ বিউটিফুল স্পেকটাকেল বাট অ্যাট দ্য সেম টাইম ইট প্রেজেন্টস দেম অ্যাজ ফ্রেজাইল অ্যান্ড ভালনারেবল দ্য ফাইন লাইট বিটুইন দ্য বিউটি হুড ইজ থিঙ্কিং অ্যাবাউট অ্যান্ড দ্য রিয়েলিটি অফ ইজ লাইফ পারহ্যাপস দিস পলিসেমিক ডেসক্রিপশন অফ দ্য ফ্লাওয়ার্স রিফ্লেক্টস হুডস ওন ডিসপোজিশন হি ক্যান ইমাজিন দ্য ফ্লাওয়ার্স and see them yet they are not real merely fleets of light within his own depressing self as death is characterized as night in the first stanza perhaps the only thing keeping him from death is the light from his memories of childhood very beautiful explanation his love for that era driving him to continue one thing we should also remember over here is that whereas the first stanza breaks out from the memory with a harsh cesura this this stanza that is the second stanza continues its idolization or idolization the tree is living yet i mean this is the last line of the second stanza so when the poet says that the tree is living yet he is actually bringing forth an exclamation uh, that compounds his sense of excitement he sees a living remnant of the past which he has lost and here the poet finds something palpable which triggers yet more memories of his idyllic period that is his lost childhood that was the general discussion of uh, second stanza and it's time now that we should read the third stanza i remember i remember where i was used to swing and thought the air must rush as fresh to to swallows on the wing my spirit flew in feathers then that is so heavy now and summer pools could hardly cool the fever on my brow this was the third stanza so in third stanza the perceived lightness of the poet's character is exemplified through his relation to flying who relates his childhood to a bird flying freely as he swings on his favorite tree 
words like rush and fresh present the freedom of the period hood has no obligations and is representing his freedom through his association with the lightness with which he flies through the air although still rejoicing in his memories hood is ac acutely aware that his period or this period of his life has now come to an end so he uses the word flu as it sets this period of childhood childhood joviality strictly in the past the sense of freedom he once had has now ended hood evokes contrast between the lightness of youth and the heavy nature of the present so heavy now this is also a, a phrase taken directly from the poem so when he says so heavy now he is concisely compounding the sentiment throughout the poem called i remember i remember he has lost that sense of childhood joy and freedom and now he is stuck so heavy and living only for a nostalgic break into the past the tragedy in this poem is subtle but continual hood mourns for hood mourns for all he no longer is this stanza thus fades out swiftly as if the memory is quite literally draining out of hood the memory slips through his fingers as he is reminded of his current sickness last stanza i remember i remember the far trees dark and high i used to think their slender tops were close against the sky it was a childish ignorance but now it is little joy to know i am farther off from heaven than when i was a boy in stanza 4 the anaphoric first line now takes on a haunting melancholy this stanza ends with the sentiment that hood is depressed to know that he has not or is not dying he wishes he were closer to heaven indeed closer to death if he cannot return to his childhood idol he feels like he would rather die the bitter melancholy that bubbles under the surface of the poem finally breaks here this is how hood feels and there is nothing he can do about it that is why the final rhyme of i remember i remember compounds the general sentiment of the poem joy and boy that means uh, in line number 7 he writes but now it's little joy and in line number 9 uh one second yes uh in line number 9 sorry line number 8 he says than when i was a boy so in line number 6 he says but now it is little joy and in line number 8 he says that then when i was a boy so these two words joy and boy they are linked basically and they are proving against the happiness of childhood that means the rhyme takes a melancholy tone over here and hood is trying to say that he can never return to his childhood so these two concepts are linked but they are something alien to hood he believes that he is doomed because he is destined to live in the present he cannot go back to his childhood days so this was uh, the discussion and analysis of uh, of of this poem ebong shesh korobar age ami aro ekbar khub khub shongkhepe er ekta shesh alochona ta kore di jeta hocche je 
হোপফুলি তোমরা বুঝতে পেরেছ হোয়াট দ্য পোয়েম আই রিমেম্বার আই রিমেম্বার ইজ অল অ্যাবাউট দিস ইজ বেসিক্যালি আ গ্লোরিফিকেশন অফ চাইল্ডহুড বাই কন্ট্রাস্টিং ইটস পিওর ব্লিস দ্যাট ইজ দ্য ব্লিস অফ চাইল্ডহুড উইথ দ্য বোর্ডম অ্যান্ড মাইজারি অফ অ্যাডাল্টহুড অ্যান্ড ইন দিস সেন্স দ্য পোয়েম সাউন্ডস লাইক romantic poetry and it is obviously a romantic poetry because the way childhood has been presented in exaggerated way it definitely shows that it has uh, some distinct traits of romantic poetry the poem is uh, framing the poet's memories of childhood capture of the bright sunny day the color of various flowers the thrill of flying like a bird on a swing and the slender tops of far trees touching the sky the happy recollection of good days makes him wish he had breathed his last in a childhood to escape the worries cares and sins of adulthood he feels that he was closer to heaven in childhood and is quite distant from heaven in the present the gain of knowledge or wisdom in adulthood at the cost of childhood innocence is no bargain to him so he laments the loss of childhood so this was today's discussion uh, hopefully you have understood the poetry and hopefully this explanation will further help you in your studies and in understanding the poem those of you who are students of uh, icc um, i hope you people will definitely get benefited by this uh, podcast and uh, from here i would like to make a request to all of you that if you believe if you find that these academic contents are actually helping you please do subscribe to my channel and please share this contents to your near and dear ones so ajker moto etukui hopefully aro taratari amra aro ekti content ni alochonay boshbo shobai bhalo theko thank you